How's everyone doing? I'm back. <laughs> so today I'm going to go live with uh, Elizabeth and her username on Instagram is Liz Listen. So I'm going to be waiting for her to join. Um, and we are going to, she talks a lot about, thank you. My hair is still a little bit wet, so I apologize. Well, there's nothing to apologize for, but um, she talks quite a bit about relationships. So I wanted to have a conversation about welcome home and at the same time offer a perspective of how we can build a home within ourselves maybe while we are still in a relationship or building relationships with others like how do you navigate being at home with yourself while you're with another person um can you guys hear me someone said that they can't hear me <laughs> the volume is good hello hello it's so good Hi. to like, see you in real life <laughs> yeah finally finally we get to connect like this <laughs> oh it's so great yeah how are things with you good everything today's been a super busy day so this is nice it actually feels like a moment of downtime to just like be able to come on here and chat that's wonderful. I'm so excited to talk to you. And I've been following your work for a while. We connected a while ago. And I always find the things that you share to be so profound and just so helpful. So I wanted to have a conversation with you about, you know, building homes within ourselves, maybe while we're trying to build connections with others, like how do you balance being at home with yourself? you know, while you're building a life with someone or while you're opening up to someone. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I have your book right here with me. <laughs> yeah. Yay! I have mine here too. <laughs> I love it. Also, it's just beautiful, by the way. Thank you. The cover is so nice. It's like, it makes me feel very like centered and at home just to look at it. So that's so sweet. Thank yeah, you. I'm excited to talk about this with you today and even to hear like your insights around that because um, I think that it's something that people struggle with is how do I be with myself and take care of myself and feel comfortable just being with myself and also mm -hmm. feel very much wanting a relationship or being in a relationship. Um, yes. And I'm not sure what you've found, but I find that sometimes people can really struggle to hold on to themselves when mm -hmm. they're in a relationship. Yes. And that could be for many, like if they're dating, we might want to like leave, leave themselves a little bit to appeal to the other person or connect with them. Um, but they, or if they're in a long-term relationship, they might feel like they lose themselves because of all of the obligations and the challenges of being yes. in a relationship. I had someone recently send me a message saying that she walked away from a 15 year plus marriage. And she said that she, as she was leaving her husband or now ex-husband, I guess said to her, you're having a breakdown. And she said to him, I'm actually having a breakthrough because she's like, I didn't even know what music I liked. I didn't even know what food I liked. I, she's like, I lost myself so much. I molded myself into that life where I could just fit in and not cause any trouble and not. And so that really, really hit me. And one of the things that you recently shared, which I would love to discuss in this context, I'm just opening it on my other phone here um, that I think so many would benefit from. You said you can be, actually, you shared it. This is by Adam Grant. You can be demanding without being demeaning. There's nothing about being assertive and direct that requires disrespect. So what, what caught me about that is when we ask for our needs, in relationships. Um, a lot of times I find that, um, you know, 
sometimes we're made to feel like, well, the way you said that was just the, the way that you make it come across as it's an expectation or you're making me feel like I'm letting you down or whatever. In the context of having a home within and also at the same time wanting to go to someone for love or for affection. Because the thing, the first thing that would come to my mind naturally before I made all these realizations is to say, well, I don't need anyone. Like if that person doesn't want to meet my needs, then that's totally their choice. That's fine. And then I would feel alone and I would say, well, then what's the purpose of being in a relationship? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's true. I think that happens to a lot of us when we're in a relationship and then we start, we get into it to be connected, to feel secure, yeah. to have all of these things. And then we end up feeling really alone. And then we're like, well, what in the world is happening here? What's the point of me being a part of this? Yeah. Um, and something I talk to people a lot about is that ideally in relationships, we can uh, have awareness of ourself while still holding awareness of the other two. And I think what tends to happen is we lose one or the other in relationships. Mm -hmm. We're either completely hyper aware of the other person and you know, what they, what they need, what they want, if they're mad at us, if they love us, all of that stuff. And we completely lose contact with ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, or we become very hyper aware of ourselves. And it's like becomes all about what we want, all about what we need all of the time. And I find that that's often when the person has been too other aware for too long. Yes, they kind of snap onto the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, and then what happens is we lose other awareness. And mm -hmm. stop thinking about what's going on for the other person or how they're feeling or what they would need, um, mm -hmm. what their perspective is on a situation. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to hold on to both. Yeah, I and, and, and now it's making me think that mm, I find that most people who struggle with their their needs not being met in a relationship are probably dealing with someone who has either lost complete awareness of the other, or maybe they are too aware of themselves and what they need and where they are, or maybe they're just not ready to, you know, give that person what they need. Maybe they just feel like I, I'm not, I can't even be aware of myself. I'm not even going to be aware of you. And that's where a lot of that pain happens, where it's like, well, if you love me enough, or if you love me, why don't you do this or that for me? And that's where that resistance is created, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think something that your book is really important, or a reason your book is really important is because I think that what happens is that we don't really know how to be with ourselves. And we go into relationships um, seeking the things that we wish we could give ourselves, but we can't. Yes. So Ooh, going that's off so of what powerful. you just yeah. had, right? <laughs> yeah. We have all, and I was just having a conversation with someone about this, but we are trying to find meaning in our relationships, sometimes mm -hmm. in a way that the other person can't realistically provide for us. So mm -hmm. we want the other person to finally make us feel whole. We want the other person to finally give us a sense of security. You know, once I'm with yeah. them, I'm not gonna have to worry anymore. I'm gonna feel yeah. safe, or I'm gonna feel financially stable, or I'm gonna, all of these things, um, we really hope that this other person can give us. Yeah. And like you said, we get into the relationship and we have these assumptions, you know, if you loved me, you would X, Y, and Z. Yeah, you really loved me. You wouldn't do that thing you do anymore, or you would start to care more about talking about feelings, or you would be more interested in, in this and that. And we tend to then get into tension with the other person, mm -hmm. because we're asking them to no longer be themselves in order to prove that they love us. So we're actually asking them to leave the home within themselves. Yes, to build a home for us. Yes. And that that can lead like you said, to a lot of tension in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I always say this. So when we do what you just described, it is technically us building a home for ourselves within someone else. Mm -hmm. And it's so much easier 
to say, why aren't you giving me what I need? Why don't you love me the way that I deserve to be loved? It's so much easier to say that than it is to say, well, you know what? Maybe I'm placing so much responsibility on someone else to give me what I need because I'm so afraid of feeling like I'm doing something I've never done before, which is give myself the love that I need, give myself the that feeling of security, like you were talking about financial security or whatever, coming from, you know, my little community back home in Lebanon. I remember all of my friends when we were younger, when we were in high school, their ultimate dream was to marry someone and, you know, someone who would provide for them. They didn't really have dreams of like, oh, I want this career one day. Or, And now that I look back at that, I, I feel like when you are looking for someone to provide for you something that you need, you are giving them the power over, you know, what does that home look like? What do those conditions look like? And so when you don't even allow yourself, when you don't even give yourself permission to say, well, maybe I have the power and the ability to give that to myself. When you don't even, when that doesn't even cross your mind, that's because it's something you've never done before. And it's so much easier to say it's that person's responsibility to give me that whatever it is, whether it's a financial security or love or affection or feeling like you're important to someone. It's so much easier to say, why doesn't that person give it to me? As opposed to what do I need to do to get to a point where I can come to myself first, where I can, it, I've, I've said this a billion times, like, usually after a relationship ends or after something doesn't go the way that we want it to, we say, well, it's time for me to love myself. And I always say self-love is not a backup plan. Self-love is your primary plan, right? Yeah. Like it should be there, whether you're with someone or you're not with someone. It's, it yeah. shouldn't depend on whether you have that external source of love and then you say well I don't need to give myself love because there's someone giving it to me and it's not like we sit and say that right. but we act that way that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but we act that way right so it's it's always so interesting to me when like even in my own personal life when I catch myself saying you know well that person must not love me because you know he's not giving me what I like, I, I made a request, and it's not being given to me, that means that he doesn't love me enough to give me that. And then I immediately have to just, you know, calm down and sit with the thought and, and ask myself if it's true. And I talk about this in Welcome Home, too. I say, ask yourself, is the thought true? And if it is, is there something I can do about it to change it? Most times, it's not true. Most times, it's that it's the same story we tell ourselves yeah. that we believe about ourselves, which in my case in Welcome Home, it was I don't deserve to be held on to. Every single ending in my life, whether it was with a person or with a job or whatever, it was I don't deserve to belong. I don't deserve to be held on to. And so it's like your brain is constantly looking for that confirmation that that, you know, the only reason that this person isn't giving you what you want is that you don't deserve it, as opposed yeah. to all the other reasons, which could be maybe they can't. Maybe they feel like you're trying to control them by asking them for something. Like, what if it actually has nothing to do with you yeah. and everything to do with, you know, their willingness, their their level of awareness, right? Yeah. I, I love that because I think that when we get stuck in relational cycles that are not fulfilling, conflictual, all sorts of things, what has happened is that we've actually, we actually lose sense of reality. Yes. And we have all these stories and sometimes they're stories like it's because I'm not worthy. It's because um, I'm too difficult. I need to be more easygoing. Sometimes it's stories about the other person. You know, the other mm -hmm. person is a jerk. The other person is avoidant. Yeah. The other person is. And so we create all of these like really rigid narratives about who each person is. And then we live within that. And mm -hmm. what starts to happen when you come back to yourself and you say, you know, I don't know if that story is true or not, but what I'm going to do is sit back and just look at, you know, when I make this request and they say they can't, what's that mm -hmm. feel like for me? Mm -hmm. It feels really bad. And then also, how do they react when I bring that up? 
So when I say, you know, honey, it, for some reason, I've always had this dream that I was going to be in this partnership where my partner would be able to do X, Y, and Z. And when that doesn't happen, I feel really disappointed. How does your partner mm -hmm. then respond? Are you able to actually look at that and say, oh, well, they really heard me, they cared, or they still shut me down? The more that you are able to speak up for you, which I think is part of being at home with yourself, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. And to actually share what is happening internally for you, to share like what you're thinking and what you need from a place of groundedness, the more likely you are going to see the reality of the other person. Mm. And then you can make really good informed decisions. You can say, wow, you know, when I looked at it without this lens, uh, maybe I'm too difficult or maybe it's because they're a jerk or whatever. What I found was that our interactions always just still feel really bad. Or I mm -hmm. found that when I bring things up, they reject me and they, they do kind of shut me down. And that's not really the relationship I want to be in. And you start to explore it more based off of what you want and what feels good to you and what you need. And yes. you can then decide what you're going to do with that. Now, mm -hmm. if you're not at home with yourself, then what happens is you get into conflict that's about all the stories, and then you step away from the conflict and you'll say to yourself, oh, well, that's probably not how they really act. It's probably just because I yelled at them, or it's probably because I accused them of, of something. So you're never really sure what's going on. And I think mm -hmm. that's why it's, what you said is so important. Like, are you able to say, you know, I think I have a story that I'm not mm -hmm. worried and mm -hmm. but whenever someone says that they can't go to an event with me, I feel like they don't love me. Is yeah. that when I look at the totality of the person though, is it really that they don't love me or like, is there, is there some awareness of them I need to have? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you can start saying things like, oh, interesting. They, they're kind of more of an introvert. That's why they don't go with me. Not because mm -hmm. of me, because they don't love social events or they're, they're not an emotions person. They're not talking about yes. emotions. Yeah. I wrote something in Welcome Home. As you were talking, it, it was coming to me and I, I want to find it and read it. Um, actually, I'm going to find it on my Kindle because it's much easier than finding it in the book. Because <laughs> it's, it's over 300 pages, so I'm going to be flipping endlessly. Um, it has the word audition in it. And I remember when I made that, that realization, it was so powerful for me. I wrote, I had to learn the hard way that when you keep trying to change the ending, it will only end worse than the way it ended the first time. And here I was talking about how like, say a relationship comes to an end. We try so hard, even though we might be on so many levels aware that this relationship isn't right for me. But we fight so hard for it to stay just so that it doesn't fall under all the other confirmations we gave ourselves of whatever belief it is that we have of, of ourselves. So we think if I change this ending, it will change what the grand ending that of, of whatever it is that I believe about myself. So I say here, that the more you try to change it, it will end only end worse than the way it ended the first time. And the answer I'd been in search of for so long came to me when I stopped looking for it outside myself. And then I say, I was so fixated on the happy ending that I forgot to make sure the right characters were in place. I didn't even make the characters audition for their roles. I was so desperate to get to the happy ending that I just allowed anyone to take any role. And if it hadn't been Noah, which is one of the people I talk about, it would have been someone like him. Because my happy ending was based on me proving I was worth that, which is the love, the belonging, instead of believing it first. My happy ending was that in the future, based on someone giving it to me, based on someone building a home for me within him. My happy ending was based in others, not myself. And for the longest time, I convinced myself that the story had to end the way I thought I needed it to end. That's why every time it ended, I went back. It was like gambling, except I lost every single time. The truth is that sometimes the happy ending begins with someone walking away from you. 
Sometimes it's better when they don't give you a reason. As hard as it is, it awakens you to your desperate need to come home to yourself. I just thought of I that as it. you were saying. <laughs> that is amazing. It's funny. Um, I was just on a podcast and he asked me, tell me about a defining moment in your life. And I, mm -hmm. it was kind of like a Noah story, I guess. It was, yeah. You know, I said it was the time that I found out that someone had been cheating on me pretty significantly. And it honestly, awful. Night, it was awful, but mm -hmm. something about it snapped me into, it was like almost shocked me into recognizing how much I've been putting into this other person. Like mm -hmm. there was always this hope you know, when he and I get on the same page, I'm gonna have a beautiful life. He's going to do this and this and this for me, right? Like I'm gonna get mm -hmm. all the things I want in life because of a life with him. And that, that really terrible moment woke me up to like how much I wasn't, how much I could do most of that for myself. Yes. And I was like, why have I been waiting for this person to like make it okay for me to get the things that I want and I need. And really like within the next several months, I was like, I'm getting a new job. I'm changing what's going on with my friendships. I'm going to start dating differently. Um, and it changed everything to have that wake up mm -hmm. call of, yeah, I'm, I'm putting everything into this person to do it for me and I can do it for me. Yes. And the frustration that we, like, you know, think about it this way. When you're with someone who's constantly either betraying your trust or not giving you what you need, it's, it gives you something to constantly work on. And yeah. like, like what I described it as gambling, right? Like, it's that. like a slots machine. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you win, you get what you want, you get your needs met, but most times you don't. And it's that little hope. And I know I'm not the first one who described it this way, but it's that hope that maybe this time it'll be one of the times it's like the unpredictability of it is so addictive but if you were to just sit back and say what if i just let go like what if i just stop trying to make someone love me the right way and the right way doesn't have to be the right way for you know anyone else out there but just like an in an ethical respectful kind of way why why am i fighting for someone to see my worth when the truth is, they are the ones who have to make that decision. I'm not the one. You should never put yourself in a situation where you're, you're proving your worth to someone. Absolutely never. You could put yourself in a situation where you could, you know, say these things happen in relationships where your partner might, you know, doubt what your intentions were uh, behind saying something or doing something. In a situation like that, yes, absolutely. Sit down, have the conversation, validate what they're feeling. Say, I know, you know, I understand that based on your past experiences or whatever, you perceived what I did that way, but it was genuinely not my intention. I apologize for it, blah, blah, blah. But you should never be sitting at the table where you're actually fighting for your worth. Yeah. And there was once, this came to me right now, there was once this quote that I read that I loved so much that says, um, I'm not afraid to eat alone because I know what I bring to the table. I love that. <laughs> Isn't it so powerful? It's like yeah. literally what you were just talking about. Yeah. Like there's so much that you were able to do for yourself that like once you really saw that, it, it, it's transformational because now your power is back within you. Yes. Yeah. And to like let go of the fantasy, right? Of like mm -hmm. this person is going to save me. Um, you know, I'm sure as we're talking, there's people listening that really need to hear this right now. That are I agree. <laughs> a similar situation where they're the ones doing all the work. They're the ones mm -hmm. shape shape shifting themselves. You know, hyper focused on the relationship, so then they can't focus on their work, right? Like I would, I remember, like I would start crying at work because I something just wasn't right. And so it was detrimental to like all these things I wanted in my life. Um, and this other person wasn't crying at work. <laughs> they were, they were yeah. doing their own thing. And I hope that as someone's listening today, that maybe if they're identifying, they're the ones to do it all. They're the ones moving, making the dates, having the conversations, shifting themselves, all of that. 
it doesn't mean that they have to like end it immediately. But like you said, what would happen if you let go? What would happen mm -hmm. if you, you know, you said, oh, well, you know, they haven't called me in a couple days. I'm not going to call them. Or yeah, they say that the reason we can't be together is because they're too busy with work. Okay, what if mm -hmm. I didn't try to make it eat? What if I didn't say something like, well, I won't bother you too much. And I can make it, we can make it work in this way. What if you just said, okay, I'll let them work it out. Because people who can really be with you. Yes. And I think, you know, being home with yourself means recognizing that you're not the only one who can figure out how to make a relationship work. And if another yes. person isn't figuring it out, it's not because they don't have the capacity. It's yes. because it's not right. And sitting back and seeing yes. what happens is huge. And I, I wish so many people could hear this, but I find there's there's so much advice out there that says, you know, when someone doesn't meet you where you are, they're not meeting your needs, but in a, in a hurtful way. I'm not saying in a way yeah. where they're like being honest with you about where they are, like in a way where they keep you guessing, they shut you out, they give you the silent treatment. Yeah. Like, please remember that there's there's a choice to be made on their part. If they are choosing to not communicate, they're making that choice. Just like you're making the choice to overcompensate for what they're not doing. Just like you're making the choice to like send that message and say, well, that's okay or whatever, when really it's not. The power in, and, and I've done this recently, the power in just sitting back and allowing the other person to be who they are without you fighting so hard to change them or fighting so hard to say like, but I told you that this bothers me. Why are you repeating it? Okay, just then stop trying. Like if you're aware that this person did something that they were aware hurts you. Yeah. Why do you need to repeat that and repeat that and repeat that instead of saying, you know what? They've made a choice. Yeah. They've made a choice. Like it's that acceptance that I think we, we get scared of because what it means is we have to make a decision about whether we want to stay or leave. And I think coming from a place of self-love, coming from a place of being at home with ourselves, it's the number of times that you abandon that home within to be seen through someone else's eyes under their roof in their home. At some point, it becomes so exhausting that you're going to feel like you don't even know where you live anymore. You don't even know what your home looks like anymore because you, like literally speaking, you have spent most of your time allowing yourself to see yourself through someone else's eyes, allowing yourself to see the potential of what kind of love or respect or being heard or being seen or in a relationship just based on what that person is choosing to give you or, or what they're choosing, where they're choosing to meet you at. And if you just sit with your worth, like sit and in the self-love room, I talk about having a power bubble around you, you know, wherever you go, you feel that inner power of yours that nothing can seep through it because you know what your worth is and not in a way that's like, I'm going to try to convince the other person to see my worth the way that I see it because I see my worth. No, it's in a way that's like, if being in a state of self love means that I don't tell a person more than once not to disrespect me or not to yell at me or not to do whatever it is that they do that clearly is disrespectful. I'm not going to say it more than once. I will choose to, to preserve my energy because what happens when you keep punching a wall that's just you're hurting yourself and the wall yeah. is not changing. And yeah. I'm not saying that to be mean towards anyone, but I'm just saying for your own state of, of being at home with yourself, remember where to allow your energy to go. Communicate your boundaries, yes, but don't over, like if, you're, if you keep telling someone, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, then you on some level are admitting that maybe your, your words aren't powerful enough. Yeah. And you're still hoping that the same thing that you're doing is going to bring you a different result, right? Yeah, so true. And like you said, 
if you're continuing to communicate boundaries and nothing's changing, but you're staying in it, what I usually talk to people about is that that probably means your internal boundaries aren't very strong because, mm -hmm. you know, Instagram talks a lot about what we say to others are, and I call them external boundaries. We love to talk about like telling another person, you can't do that, or I don't like it when you do X, Y, and Z, but really being able to stick to that boundary means you have a boundary with yourself. And it's yes. the ability to say, you know, I'm not going to go near that. Per I'm not going to go near that person anymore. Instead of gambling, like you said, and continuing to go back, hoping that if I say it one more time, they will react differently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what they've done and I'm going to say, um, you know, my boundary has to be that even when they call me, since I've decided the relationship is over, I'm not going to go over there, you know, because yes. they're not respecting that limit. So really trying to work on internal boundaries, I think is probably a lot of coming home to yourself too, like being able to say no and stick to something just because it's good to you, even if the other person or the wall doesn't change. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. And I think we struggle with doing that, especially as empaths, especially as people pleasers or ex people pleasers or in that transition phase, uh, whatever it is, we struggle with even allowing ourselves to have that internal boundary because we immediately feel what that person is going to feel as soon as we, we put ourselves first. And we, it's like, we don't want to cause them that pain, but you are your number one priority. If hurting yourself comes at the expense of not causing another person an inconvenience, then I'm sorry, cause the inconvenience. You don't need to hurt yourself to make someone else comfortable. And then just perpetuate that cycle of, you know, I'm going to adapt what my internal boundaries look like, mm -hmm. based on what where you're willing to meet me, you know, mm -hmm. and and I talk about this a lot with family relationships, for example, I say, you know, especially when there's an enmeshment dynamic where there really aren't any boundaries. And you think, well, if I do this, you think of every single person in your family and what they they're going to think and how they're going to feel and yes. you want to shield them from that pain. So you just you either don't go ahead or you hide it. And both yeah. ways are not healthy. And I always say like, Remember, just like you are making a choice to do something with your life, the pain that they are experiencing as a result of something that you are choosing for yourself is something they have to deal with. What you have to deal with is breaking whatever shame is in the way, breaking whatever, you know, barriers are in the way. That's what you have to deal with. They can deal with that pain on their own. And I know it sounds harsh, but that's how it should be. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's like recognizing where responsibility lies, right? Like, mm -hmm. sometimes we can be so passive um, and meshed that we think we, we have the sense of I can suffer so that they don't, which yes. is essentially you saying I'm responsible for continually creating comfort in their life and taking away any difficulty. Um, on the other end of that spectrum is I will, I will hurt you because you hurt me and I'm going to make you feel bad because you made me feel bad. But in the middle, we're able to say, you know what? I'm responsible for me and yes. something is hurting me. I will take respons responsibility for getting myself out of that, for expressing myself, whatever. And then you, I trust you can take care of your own hurt and your own reaction to what I'm doing right now. So being in relationships requires us to be able to do both and to not be on either end of the spectrum where it's I'll suffer so you don't or I'll make you suffer. But I, I'm not going to control whether or not you suffer. I'm not going to create suffering for you. But I recognize that I can't protect you from that all of the time. And so I'm going to yes. take care of me. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that so much, seeing it as the polar opposites and I'm in the middle and I'm I'm not going to inflict that pain but yeah. if something I'm doing for myself somehow causes you pain because of the way you think it will make you come across or because of you know you coming to 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 the realization that there's you actually have to be open to thinking that others think in different ways mm -hmm. like 
then deal with that on your own. I will help you if I can, but I'm not going to fight for permission to live my life that I, the way that I believe is authentic to me. And that's so difficult for people who like get stuck in that kind of dynamic, not necessarily just with families, but in relationships as well, where it's like, it's not even on the table that you could make a decision, a certain decision, just because you immediately know how it's going to affect others. So you just say, well, I'm not going to cause that kind of pain for others. I'm, I'm not going to cause anybody suffering. And it's like, again, when you remember that your sense of being one with yourself and your, your, your authentic self really yeah. is not dependent on what others believe your authentic self needs to be. It's not dependent on what kind of love others believe you are worthy of based on who you are, what decisions you make. When you remove, like, because I say also people's opinions can be visitors in our homes. Like sometimes we allow people's opinions. We build, we build little homes in people's yeah, opinions because they, they get to us so much. So yeah. I talk about that in the compassion room where I talk about boundaries and I say, you know, um, sometimes people's opinions and, and their, their way of seeing us and the way that they talk to us, like say someone leaves a negative comment on social media or whatever. Sometimes when it, uh, when you allow it to affect you so much, then you're allowing your self worth to seep in that direction or the, your sense of who you are to seep in that direction. Because if you are so, strong in not strong that's not the word if you are if you are so at home with yourself you can recognize that the way that someone thinks of you or their opinion or the way they speak to you is hurtful yeah without trying to change it because you're like well you know what that's not me you're entitled yeah. to your opinion you're entitled yeah. to the way you think but but that that really isn't me so yeah <laughs> Hold on to yourself yes yeah. Hold on to yourself. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Well, oh, wow, we've been talking for 40 minutes. <laughs> we know, we aimed for 20 like, to 30. I was like, well, I could go for like an hour. <laughs> yeah, seriously, we could. Um, so as you were reading Welcome Home, like what were, what was, I, I would say, what was one of the most powerful things for you to read? I loved um, thinking about it as the rooms. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like for me personally, and I always struggle to find things in books too. <laughs> I <laughs> have it on my Kindle. I feel like for me personally, like having conceptualizations for things can really help me. Um, mm -hmm. Like being able to be like, okay, this is compassion, right? And this mm -hmm. is what that room can look like. That was really powerful to me. I think it's really powerful to think about having, like you just said, having that room for, you know, how do you say it? Like for somebody else, like has a room in you at some point, but yes. you don't have like any rooms for yourself um, mm -hmm. or you're like losing some of those rooms. That was really powerful. I loved the part about surrender and mm. letting go. Um, Cause I think, I think surrender is kind of what it's all about a lot yes. of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And I've shared this before in the surrender room after writing that whole chapter, I knew something was missing. And what was missing was talking about surrendering to positive emotions. I had only spoken about surrendering to negative emotions. And it hit me like I have I experienced mostly, right, mostly yeah. negative. I've, I've been in resistance to negative emotions, never really thought that I had permission to feel beautiful things or great things that that always felt like it was selfish and maybe life just, you know, I, I, I grew up, I had a very um, a religious upbringing with the school that I attended. My parents weren't really that religious, but the school I attended was, and it, that concept of like struggle means you're closer to God. I went to Catholic <laughs> you know? school, so I, I understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like you don't even you the moment that something good is coming your way, you're immediately like, this is wrong. I, I'm not allowed to yeah. feel this because if I feel something good, then I must be selfish in some way. So 
when that realization came to me, I, I, I wrote that there. I said, you know what? I, I wrote this chapter again because there was a, another part of it that was missing, which is yes. also allowing yourself to experience the positives. So I love yeah. that. There's, you know, I think you say, here's this quote that I like, the ultimate goal of being home with yourself is to not never experience negative emotions, but to learn how mm -hmm. to dive into them by constructively listening and understanding, not drowning in them by continuing to resist them. I think it's the same for positive, right? Like we, yes we resist the positive and we kind of like drown because we're not allowing ourselves to come up for like the air that's given to us. But I think that what people do in relationships is they tend to try not to be in the negative emotions. And so mm -hmm. they resist it. They resist the reality that they feel disappointed by the relationship mm -hmm. or they resist the reality that this other person is treating them really badly. But what you say here is so important, which is it's like, if you resist it, then you're never going to understand them. Yes. And our, our emotions are teaching us something. And if you can't yes. surrender to those and say, these are just here and they're trying to tell me something, then all the fighting you're doing is going to create so much noise that mm -hmm. you don't hear what they're trying to tell you. And you get stuck in loops again and again and again. Um, yes. So I, I just, I think that talking about surrender, and I hope everyone reads your book and reads the part about surrender, is really important because we do so much resisting, and it keeps us so stuck. Yes. We think that if we don't deal with it, it's going to somehow go away on its own. But yes. I've been writing about this forever. Every time I say these mountains that you are carrying, you were only supposed to climb, I'm referring to those negative emotions, I'm referring to those limiting beliefs, I'm referring to those events that you just don't want to deal with, because you think, if I actually allow myself to think that this is real, like say, for example, you're in a relationship, it's the wrong one. And if, if I actually allow myself to believe that this person isn't right for me, then oh my goodness, I have to do something about it. And I'm going to be alone. And then da, da, da. so I'd rather yeah. not, right? Yeah. So but dragging that behind you it's weighing you down it's taking up so much space like I I've given this example before like if you have a, a the most practical example I can give you a, a freezer full of foods that you know you're not you're just you're they're there and you're like you know I can't throw them out because I got them well you're filling that up and it's going to get to a point where you're not going to have room for for new things to put in there it's the same thing with emotions with events with when you don't deal with it you're not getting rid of it you're just delaying when you actually have to deal with it yeah and you have an exercise in here that's really helpful um like submission number four write it down and mm -hmm. you write the beauty in writing is the freedom and liberation in it. Open up to yourself, your pain and your emotions. How are you really feeling? And I think that sometimes people don't give themselves enough time to write or to think what they are really feeling. They'll say, I'm yes. okay. Or I don't know. I'm kind of crummy. But when you sit down and you write it out and it just, you just like let it go. Like you say, without editing, um, you can gain a lot of clarity around what's actually going on for you. Yes. Honestly, for the longest time, before I even self-published my first book, I would go to a coffee shop and I would sit there for hours with my journal and just, I would just write. I love And that. it would start with, it would start with what I was feeling in the moment. And I would be starting with now and I would find myself ending up when I was six years old or seven years old. Like I'm trying to make sense of why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling right now. And the truth is, you do have to go back. You can't, and I talk about this also in Welcome Home, I say, if you try to heal a wound just by healing now, as opposed to understanding where that wound came from and what kind of wound, you know, other wounds in your life that wound resembles and how, because what happens is <laughs> when something causes you pain, that you know, you've experienced that pain before and you say, oh, this always happens to me or whatever. When you're experiencing this new pain now, you're not just experiencing this pain. You're experiencing all of the other pains. They're visiting you. You're thinking back to every other 
experience where it's like I imagine it as when I'm going on stage mm -hmm. if I'm going to uh, I can choose to bring with me every single experience where I was on stage that it didn't go well or I could bring up with me every voice that tells me you can't do this who do you think you are blah blah blah, blah. and it's like that pressure of that moment I can choose to make it just about that moment or I can choose to you know bring all the other moments either the positive ones or the negative ones so when you're healing a wound recognize that the the pain of it is connected to so many other wounds and yeah. to get to that you have to be open with yourself about your emotions and so yeah I would just sit there and write and write and write and write that. and write <laughs> I love that that's yeah. what I do anytime I'm having a lot of challenging feelings like anytime I've, I've had a breakup in the past or grief I will just write I'll be like I'm just gonna write for an hour about all of the things I'm upset about or all the things I want to say and yeah it's so helpful to get it out of the loop of your brain and like onto a piece of paper yes don't just let it like roam and roam and roam and yeah. just eat up your time just let it out and then just you've given it a voice and without having to fight for someone else to hear it or I always say hear yourself before you go to someone else to hear you and that's part of it like make sense of what you're thinking or or maybe not even make sense of it but give it a voice yeah and yeah. right I love this it. was so amazing and I hope I that we get it. to do more lives I in the future another live. this is so great yeah yeah, and I hope everybody watching, I've seen, seen like a billion and ten comments. Me too. I'm trying to get yeah. that, but it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it is hard. So I hope everybody goes to your platform and sees your incredible work. And oh, like, to, thank you for all of the feedback that you gave me on Welcome Home, all the things that you loved and the strategies that you mentioned. And yeah, I'm looking an forward to book. I hope that thank everyone you. has all 165 of you. <laughs> yes the ones who are online now but by the end of it it'll probably be like at least ten thousand. yeah so, so all ten thousand yeah. of you better go get them <laughs> yes <laughs> okay well i hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and we'll talk soon all right bye take care bye everyone bye